Here we go now guys, Jack Reeve, Talk Norris City here, back for the second day of the daily videos across this World Cup period. The World Cup starts in just two days time. Have you entered your fans bet fantasy football team yet? If not, links in the description, spaces are filling up fast. If you do want that free entry, please, please, please do enter soon so you don't miss out. £25,000 of money up for grabs. Um, yeah, so that is up for grabs. Links in the description. Enter your World Cup team completely free. The title says it all. Josh Murphy has indeed gone to Cardiff. It developed so quickly, this story. Michael Bailey broke it for the EDP um, yesterday. Uh, and then I think it was John Percy at The Telegraph then reported on it. And then Nick Mashter reported on it. Three very well-respected sources. Once Michael Bailey uh, reveals something, it's usually true um, and then when Nick Mashter jumps on it as well it's pretty much certain. 11 million pounds the rumoured fee of course it's an undisclosed fee as most transfers are nowadays but in general 11 million pounds for a player who averaged one goal in five games I think it was 20 goals at 108 appearances for Norwich City that's not too bad. Did we see everything from Josh? It, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure following following Josh's kind of career at Norwich City. I remember that that young lad breaking onto the, scene, in, onto the scene in the FA Youth Cup. So exciting. Him and Jacob on either side with Carlton Morris down the middle. What a fantastic youth side that was. And that attacking lineup of Josh, Jacob and Carlton. Carlton's now unfortunately out injured, but I think he probably would have been given a chance next season. Jacob's being sold for £13 million. Josh has been sold for £11 million. That's nearly £25 million worth in fees. That's not a bad comeback on, on, your, on your FA Youth Cup winning team. And of course, a few more of them players have broke through. I've just seen Harry Toffolo signed for Lincoln. Um, a lot of them players doing very well in the Football League. Of course, then you've got Jamal Loza who broke onto the scene as well. Uh, I'm not actually sure what Jamal's up to nowadays, but he was a very exciting product. Josh Murphy, though, um, on his day, I think, was one of the championship's most exciting players. We saw that goal of the season goal against Aston Villa. I remember his, his performance away at Aston Villa. Despite we lost that game, it was, pul it was pulsating. It was exciting. He'd taken on his man at any instance. And we saw that in the flashes last season. I don't think we saw it as much as we maybe would have liked to. But that £11 million fee is based, I think, on, on the potential rather than what we actually saw last season. I think that's quite an inflated price as we see with English talent so much nowadays. You see Gerard Delafeu going for an £11.5 million. He's a proven player in the Premier League coming through the ranks at Barcelona, going for the same amount of money as a 14th place championship player. That's an interesting concept, but I think on his day, Josh can be as influential as a Gerard Delafeu, um, for example. I think the whole... Norwich sell too, too cheaply, Norwich sell too easy is actually a bit of a redundant argument nowadays. I've been looking back at some of the past season's transfers. We sold Jacob Murphy for £12 million. We sold Josh Murphy for £11 million. Johnny Housen for £6 million. Lewis Graben for £8 million. Alex Pritchard for £13 million. And an ageing Cameron Jerome for £3 million. You look at them kind of stats, and yes, we have sold players on the cheap in the past. But I think on the whole, our bargaining power has actually been really strong over the past couple of years. And this Josh Murphy transfer now plays into the James Madison transfer. Of course, James Madison will probably leave this summer. It would take an absolute miracle for him to stay at the football club. But what has now happened is there's a bidding war. We're not relying on James Madison's um, transfer fee to then fund our incomings this summer. We've already made one signing. We've been linked with a few others. We're not now relying on that £20 million chunk of money to do business. What this now means is you've got Leicester, a, a financial powerhouse, you could say, in the Premier League now, and also Everton, who don't have, um, you know, they, they've got a, a few pennies to rub together. Um, you've got them two clubs going against each other. We are not time bound in terms of when we sell James Madison. That means, hopefully, an inflated price on him as well. We might be looking near, near enough £25 million. The other argument with this is, well, is this £11 million? It's a good fee. I think everyone can agree on that. Is this now going to be reinvested into the kitty? Well, probably not is, is the answer. We've got a £20 million deficit that needs to be filled. That's been caused by stupid contracts that we've signed and, and we're still paying off that. 
lack of Premier League football, but still pr playing Premier League wages. We took big risks in the Premier League, like you have to. And, you know, you see some clubs like Aston Villa, like Sunderland, paying much um, more costly fines because of it than we are. You know, we're in a situation where we are sustainable, but we are not in a situation to spend six, seven million pounds on players anymore and spend 50,000 pounds a week on wages anymore. We're in a situation where we have to be careful with our money. And that's what Stuart Weber and Daniel Farker and Steve Stone have had to do. And that has therefore meant that we have had to slip down the championship table a little bit. You would hope with time that we are able to now progress back up the, the table as things start to level out a little bit more. Josh Murphy, though, I think Cardiff, um, it's, it's not really a Neil Warnock type signing, this is it. But I, th I really hope he does well in the Premier League. He deserves it. Um, he needs to become more consistent. And I think Josh knows that himself. It, it was very interesting to see Stuart Webber's comments online. Go and read it on the Norwich City website. This whole, did the fans support him as much as possible argument is an interesting one. And I, and I do sympathise with both viewpoints. But I actually think on the whole, Josh Murphy was well backed at Norwich City, especially through that time when he was progressing into the first team. He got into the first team. He, he, he started very well in the first team. And then his consistency started to wear off a little bit, as do a lot of wingers. And, and I think the only real consistent winger we've had in my lifetime is Darren Huckabee. And he's, as you know, very well loved. We've seen fantastic wingers as well. We've seen Nathan Redmond, who probably wasn't the most well supported. But on the whole, I think Carrow supported Josh Murphy well. And I think Josh Murphy will look back on his time at Norwich with, with real joy. Um, so I don't think the fans drove him out of the football club by any stretch of the imagination. You log on Twitter now and you see a good reception for Josh Murphy. So, look, I wish Josh all the best. He's, he's a top guy and, and I hope he does very well at Cardiff. I think Cardiff have got a good player there. Admittedly, maybe paid a bit too much, but to get that English talent in football nowadays, you have got to pay slightly over the odds. Um, so let me know your thoughts on Josh Murphy. Did we get the best out of him? Did you like Josh Murphy um, and also that, that all-important transfer fee? Are you happy with the amount we receive? Let me know. Links in the description. Thoughts in the comments section below. Sign up to Fans Bet Fantasy Football. £25,000 up for grabs. That could pay for about four days' work from Stephen Naismith. And I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.